My name is John Steele from the University of New South Wales. This is the next in my little sequence of videos on complex analysis. In this video, I'm going to continue looking at complex contour integration, in particular the use of a function known as an antiderivative. And this is based on this theorem I've written up here. If gamma is a contour, remember that's just a, a curve that's piecewise smooth, a finite number of corners at most, from a point Z0 to a point Z1, and you've got a function big F that is analytic on the contour gamma, and it's very important this function is analytic on gamma, and it has a property that the derivative of uh, big F is little f. We call big F the antiderivative of little f, that's where the term comes from. Then the integral along gamma f of z dz is the value of the antiderivative at the end minus its value at the beginning. So the value of the integral only depends on the endpoints, assuming you can have this antiderivative function. And what I'm going to do is do a few examples. The first one, which I've already got written up here, is a very simple example, and it's exactly the same integral that we met in a previous video I did. I'm just integrating the function z between 5 and 2 plus 3i. In the previous video, I explicitly parameterized gamma for gamma being the straight line from 5 to 2 plus 3i, and for a quarter circle, and we've got the same answer. And we're going to see in a minute that that's not an accident because there's an antiderivative of this function z. And in fact, the antiderivative is very obvious. You want a function whose derivative is z, and that's just a half z squared. So if you want to integrate this function along any contour you like, the shape doesn't matter, just the endpoints, then this is the value of the obvious antiderivative a half z squared evaluated between 5 and 2 plus 3i. Well, that's simple enough. That's 1 half of 2 plus 3i squared minus a half of 5 squared. Well, that's 25 upon 2. So all we have to do is expand out the 2 plus 3i that's easy enough. That's going to be 4 uh, plus 12i minus 9 minus the 25 of the 2. And when we work all that lot out, well, we've got uh, 4 minus 9 is 5. Minus 5, should say, so that's uh, minus 5 halves. Minus 5 halves minus 25 halves is going to be minus 15. And a half of 12i, of course, is just 6i. So we've got minus 15 plus 6i. The shape of the contour has been irrelevant. All that's mattered is the endpoints, because we've got this antiderivative. And if you go back to the previous video, you'll see that's exactly the answer I got in both cases. What I'm going to do now is do another example, which is more typical of the use of this antiderivative theorem involving logarithms. So in this next example, I want to integrate 1 upon z dz along the contour gamma, which I've drawn here rather than explicitly parameterized. Uh, it's actually part of a rectangle, starting at, at uh, i, going through minus 1, and finishing at minus i. And we want to integrate 1 upon z. Well, the obvious antiderivative for 1 upon z is log. But the question is which log? We can't use the principal log for this example, because the principal log is not analytic at minus 1, and the whole point of the theorem is that the antiderivative has to be analytic all the way along gamma. So it's not, impor it's not in importance that the integrand is analytic along gamma, that's not relevant, it's the antiderivative we're interested in. Minus 1 upon z, of course, is only not analytic at, one, at uh, 0. So let's put down first that we can't use principal log. log of z is not a suitable anti-derivative as it is not analytic at z equals minus 1. So which version of log will we use? We'll use the version of log that has its branch cut along the positive uh, real line instead. 
we use log zero of z, which is natural log mod z plus i times argz for zero less than argz less than two pi. I discussed this notation in my video on the complex logarithm. But otherwise, all we have to do is calculate the difference between two logs, and we'll get the integral out. So the integral along gamma dz over z is this log at minus i minus that version of log at i. Now, the formula says we take the natural log of the modulus of minus i, well, the modulus of minus i is 1, and the natural log of uh, 1 is 0. So this is going to give me 0. Well, I'll write it in, shall I? Log 0 plus, well, what's the argument of minus i? Well, the argument we want to pick is the argument between 0 and 2 pi, and that, in this case, is 3 pi on 2, not minus pi on 2i, the principal argument. So this is the point where our use of log becomes important. That is 3 pi upon 2i minus the log of i. Well, once again, the modulus is uh, 1, so that's, that's not log of 0, of course. That's log of 1. Log of 1 plus pi upon 2i. And when we subtract them off, we get the final answer. It's just pi i. Now, as I say, this is a pretty typical uh, use of the antiderivative theorem to calculate an integral, uh, in particular when we're trying to do 1 upon z, when we're trying to use log. We've got to be careful about exactly which version of log we use. We must have a version of log that is analytic along the contour. OK. In this third example, it's a rather more complicated example than the previous one, I'm going to be looking at the integral of 2z over z squared plus 2 for a contour, an arbitrary contour, from minus 1 plus i to minus 1 minus i that stays in the left half plane, that is, in the plane where the real part of z is less than 0. Now, the obvious antiderivative, or reasonably obvious antiderivative, for 2z over z squared plus 2 is the log of z squared plus 2. But once again, the question is, which log do we use? Well, fortunately, in the previous video I did on the complex logarithm, I looked at the principal log of z squared plus 2, and we proved where it was analytic. In particular, it's analytic as long as you avoid the imaginary axis. So we can say that as the derivative with respect to z of the principal log of z squared plus 2 is um, 2z over z squared plus 2 on gamma, for which we have to see the previous video, this integral here is given by the principal log of, well, we want the uh, end point, which is minus 1 minus i, all squared, plus 2, minus the principal log of minus 1 plus i squared plus 2. In fact, if, if you remember, the, if you've seen that previous video, you'll know that there are points on the imaginary axis where principal log z squared plus 2 is analytic, but that's not of interest to us. As long as we avoid the imaginary axis, we by default avoid every point where the function, the antiderivative, is not analytic. So all we now need to do to complete this uh, calculation is calculate these two logarithms and subtract them. Well, principal log, what do we get? We have the natural log of the modulus. Oh, sorry, we've got to... Um, let me start. We've got to actually square that out first, I suppose. Uh, minus 1 minus i, when you square that out, gives you 2i, so that is 2 plus 2i minus the principal log of, well, minus 1 plus i, when we square it out, is minus 2i. OK, so we want the principal log of 2 plus 2i minus the principal log of 2 uh, minus 2i. Right. 
might do the bit I was doing earlier, the natural log of 2 plus 2i, it, well, we want the modulus, that's two, uh, 4 and 4 is 8, so that's the log of root 8 minus the principal log of 2 plus 2i. Well, that's up in the first quadrant. The angle is clearly pi on 4. Pi i on 4 minus principal log of minus 2 plus 2i. Well, the modulus is the same, log root 8. And this time, 2 minus 2i, two well, that's in the uh, fourth quadrant, so the principal argument is minus pi on 4i. It's the same angle. Uh, so happily, the log of root 8s cancel themselves off. We've got pi i on 4 plus pi on 4, pi i on 2, and that's my answer. <laughs>